Amen. Good to see everybody. Welcome to our worship service. Hopefully you are encouraged, inspired, and even if you aren't encouraged, this is still a good place to be. It's because you can be open about your discouragement or your confusion or your despair. You know, um, you know just found out this morning uh, our brother Steve Shock lost his father. That's tough, right? I mean, we, you know, man, so we pray for people, right? We got to show some love. Mike Mullis recently lost his brother. They had a memorial service for him here. Um, there's a lot going on, right? So you might be in all types of places. And so we come together and we sing these songs and we're reminded that a very important truth is that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. We're not physical beings just having a spiritual experience. And it's, we're spiritual in nature, and we need these spiritual moments where we come together and remember spiritual truths to help us live our lives. And so hopefully you can kind of quiet the craziness maybe going on in your mind and your heart and just give yourself to this time, at this place, at this moment, for God to somehow reach you and connect with you, maybe in ways he hasn't done. And it won't be because of any eloquence by me or not by me or whatever. It could be a song lyric. It could be uh, anything today. And I just hope that you're open uh, to how God can work in your heart. And um, let's pray. Father, we are really grateful to be able to come to a place like this and, and really receive uh, encouragement from uh, people that care about us and love us. And even in, uh, if this is our, someone's first time here, I, I just pray that they can uh, feel like this is a safe place to just express themselves, even if they doubt things, that this can be a place where they can grow in their faith. And uh, I, I just pray that our true allegiance is to you, Lord, and that uh, we don't allow anything get in the way of our deep connection to you. And I just pray that you can use this time in the book of Philippians to help us to remember where our true citizenship is. And uh, please help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to dive right in because we got a timer in the back and it's going down and I'm going to have to move. You know what I'm saying? So my section is in Philippians 3, uh, you know, and so we're going to just jump right in. All right, what we got? It advanced on my screen, so I don't know what to tell you. Is it, oh, there we go. It didn't advance up there. I don't know. It's all kind of stuff going on. All right. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. And keep your eyes on those who live according to the model you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction. Their God is the belly. And their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And it is from there that we are expecting a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to him. So we're going to look at this passage and a little bit of the first part of chapter 4, but I like this first part because, you know, the first part he talks about joining together, that's been a bit of a challenge for us in the last few years. Uh, but that's really the heart of what it means to be, I believe, a, a, a church of Christ, a church of Jesus followers. We gather together. We, we join together and we consider each other brothers and sisters. That's the radical nature of our relationship to one another. Uh, and, and Paul writes, you know, follow my example and actually keep your eye on people that follow, follow Jesus too. And, and I think what we have to really realize is what Paul is not saying is, hey, I'm the guy, I'm an apostle, you're not. I'm more spiritual than you. I planted the church. I'm the leader. Do what I say. That's not what, that is absolutely not what Paul's saying, right? That's not what we teach here either, right? That's not, that's not the spirit of this scripture. But it is helpful to have examples to follow, okay, and to imitate. But what is Paul referring to? Remember, we're reading other people's mail. 
This was a letter that was sent from one person to a congregation. Earlier in the letter, Paul talks about his example, all right? And if you remember, Jordan just preached powerfully about it last week. But just to remind you about some of the things that Paul said, you know, he talked about he had every reason to be confident in his, his achievements in life, right? Uh, he said, I, in fact, I have more confidence in you because I, I did rise above, you know, many people. And he says, whatever gains I had, I consider those lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything a loss because of the surpassing value or surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. I regard them as rubbish, trash, dung, same word, right? That's what Paul is referring to. That's his example, all right? He was an amazing teacher of the word. He gave himself fully to God's word. He took that mantle seriously in his life, right? But it got to a point where when he came into contact with who Jesus really was, he said, I'm letting go of all that because my loyalty to Jesus, my allegiance to Jesus and establishing his church is way more important than anything else I was doing in my life. But where did Paul get that example from? He's not saying, look at me. Look at how great I am. I gave up so much, and you should just follow me. Where did Paul get this from? Don't forget where he got it. He got it from Jesus. And that's the point of what he's trying to get at. Yes, rejoice is the word used a lot in the book of Philippians, and joy. And yes, that is a huge aspect of this book of the Bible. Yes. But the thematic kind of grid of this book it's in Philippians 2. It keeps coming back. To, it's like a magnet. All the themes keep coming back. If you want to live in this world and be truly like Jesus, you got to put on his mind. you got to have his attitude. He was God equal with God, but he didn't consider that something to just hold on to, use to his advantage. He didn't do it. That's not how Jesus lived his earthly life. In fact, instead of coming here, he, Jesus could going to come here as a full-grown man. He could have lived in a, in a castle or so, you know, and had servants all around him and eating the best food and, and get a standing army just to, to defend whatever he wanted to do. Go over and take other, other nations, just take them and do whatever he wanted to do. He could have come that way. He did not. He came as a baby through the a womb of a girl who didn't know what in the world was going on with her husband. It was like, what just happened? <laughs> and he had, to live, he had to live in obscurity and just... Figure out the family trade. Wait like 30 years to kind of do something. And, and then got taken out by the Roman government that conspired with the religious leaders of his own church, so to speak, his faith tradition. So that's, that's the example of Jesus. <laughs> okay. So when Paul says... You know, I went through my life and all the things I accomplished. When I came to Jesus, I, I learned something from Jesus. Don't hold on to that stuff too tightly. My allegiance is to Jesus, not my achievements. And so when we, when we follow Paul's example, it, it's helpful because here's the deal. I know how we think, right? We can think, well, you know, Jesus was the son of God and I'm not. He had like special powers to really do that kind of stuff. Well... That's why we need human examples. <laughs> That's why we need each other. So when we join together as brother and sister and we worship God, your strengths and the way you follow Jesus is sometimes I need to see that. It was funny this morning at the 9 o'clock service, uh, Ken Smith got up and he kind of welcomed everybody. And he just said, yeah, earlier this week, you know, we were supposed to go to our family group. And I told my wife, all right, we're leaving right after it's over. Because I don't really, you know, he's like, I don't really want to go. You know you felt the same thing in your life. <laughs> We've all been there, right? And he said, you know, I, he said, you know, I got there, and, you know, and, and then he said, you know, I started talking to this one person. They were telling me about something going on in their life, you know, health struggles. And I started talking to this other person. They were telling me about their job. And there's some issue going on at work. And then he said, I looked around, and I was the last one there. And, you know, and he's, he's just like, wow, my, my, my attitude wasn't awesome going in, you know. But by the time I left, I felt like I'd been a part of something. That's basically what he was getting at. And so here's the deal. Like, the next time when my family group has something and my heart's a little funky and I don't want to go, I might actually remember Ken before I think about some great Jesus thing. I might remember him. 
Like, yeah, Ken, just a guy like me, wakes up, wants to hit the snooze button 12 times. He's just like me. He's a regular guy. But man, he, he, he thought of others and he, he stayed with it. We need, our exa- we need each other's example. And that's why we have to come together. And so that's why it's very helpful to come together physically as well when, it's, you know, when we're able to, the more we are. So we need that imitation, right? We, we need that in the family of God. We join together because it helps us practically. Because the reality is we got to learn how to be together. We got to show humility by imitating other people who follow Jesus. Because guess what? J- Jesus wasn't a parent. So we may not be able to read the scriptures about how he handled his son or daughter. But we can look at families in the church. And that can help us because they're adopting spiritual principles. What if you live in a room and your roommate just keeps dishes in the sink and don't pay the bills on time? How do you deal with that? I know that never happens in the church. (laughs) Because you want to just go off on them, but you got to remember, man, you know, I've seen some brothers in the church so patient. I'm going to be patient like them. So let's imitate the way Jesus was. It starts with Jesus, and we need each other. So let's stay in each other's lives and be an example like Paul was. Because here's the deal. Many people, you know, they're going to live as enemies of the cross. They are. You know, and Paul says, I, I've told you about him often. Remember, Paul's known this church for over 10 years. They, there's a deep relationship established. He said, I've told you about him, and now I'm telling you even with tears. I mean, it, it matters how you live your life. You know, their end, the goal, the, that word end, telos, is like full maturity, right? The, the, the full maturity of that road. That, there's a way of life that's opposite the way of the cross. The way of the cross is Jesus going, you know what? What is best for everyone else? I'm willing to even, I'm willing to even suffer if that means showing love to somebody else. I'm willing to live my life and not wake up every day thinking, me, me, me. What is going to help me, me, me? I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to try to learn how to serve. I want to be known as a servant to people. Many people, and here's the deal, guys, in the West, in the United States of America, come on. No, that is not the spirit of our age. It's I want what I want, when I want it, how I want it, give it to me now. See it, desire it, grab it, like it, mine. That sounds a lot like the first people in the Bible. Wow, we haven't changed much. I don't care what, and it's like, I don't care what God says. If, it, if it's something that was going to benefit me, why wouldn't I do it? That's, weird, that's a weird way to go through life thinking about somebody else. Who's going to take care of me? Because I only got one life. So I'm going to live it the way I want to live it. I'm not going to let some God, God some book that's ancient, who, who wrote it? People just been t- tampering with it anyway. Why do I need to follow that stuff? I'm just going to do what I feel is good. I might help some poor people do some nice things. That's cool. And I'm a good person, and that's the road I'm on. And I'm just here to tell you, that's not the way of the cross. <laughs> All right? And so... And here's the deal. Yeah, Jeff, that, that's right. This is a part of the sermon where you tell all them enemies of the cross, they're going to hell. That, this is it, bro. Go preach it now. <laughs> what does Jesus say about treating your enemies? How are you supposed to treat them? Say what? Love your enemies and pray for them. That's the way of the cross. Again, that's stupid. That's, that doesn't make no sense. Some people will live their lives as if everything that you read in that Bible doesn't make any sense and is stupid and I'm not going to do it. Okay. So they're an enemy of the cross. But that doesn't mean you go up in their face. You're an enemy of the cross. You pray. And you love them. Because that's what Jesus did. (laughs) That's the mindset of Jesus. But they're in the, the full maturity of that path, that way of life. It doesn't end in a good place. And I guess we'll just find out. Right? Okay. If you got, if that's your way, we'll find out at the end. But here's the deal. I'm, I didn't major. I was an English major. I didn't major in econ or finances. But I'm pretty sure if you spend more money than you make, <laughs> that path is going to lead to poverty. <laughs> I mean, if you eat McDonald's every day and never go to the gym, you're probably going to have some health problems in about 15 years or sooner. I don't need a degree in be a dietitian to figure that out. 
If you want to take crystal meth and abuse it for seven straight years, you might look different than you did when you started. That's the path you're on. I don't need a degree in chemistry or biology to figure that out. You can choose to live a life where I'm looking out for me. I don't, you know, I, it's me. I got to take care of me. It's stupid to pray for enemies and do all that kind of stuff. Lay your life down, serve somebody, call a complete stranger, a brother or a sister, just because we go to the same church. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not in all that. I'm here for me. Okay. Well, there's a, there's a, there's an end result to that lifestyle choice too. So I'm going to stick with Jesus on that one. Uh, I, I, like, I like the way he does it, all right? It doesn't feel good all the time, but I'm not going to make my desires, my appetites, my God. You know, and that's how a lot of people live. They see it, they desire it, they want it, they take it. And then, they, and then guess what will happen? You give it to somebody else. That's what happened in the garden, and we still do it today. My lifestyle, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And then we, we boast about it, and we post about it, and we want everybody else to do it too. And that's not what, the, that's what, not what this church is all about. We are not going to set our minds on this earth as if this place is going to fulfill us. This earth is jerry-rigged to not meet your needs. I'm telling you, it's set up, it's like Vegas, you know what I'm saying? It's just, there's no clocks in the casinos, you don't know where the entrance or the exit is, they got you! ATMs everywhere, they got you! <laughs> this world is not going to do it. Set your mind on this world, it ain't going to work out, the end is not a good place. So what do we do? So him, and now Paul gets a little bit, he gets a little political here, guys. Ooh. He gets a little subversive. But you don't, you don't necessarily know it because we're living in 2000, you know, in the two, 2022, and we're so far removed. But they are living under the thumb of an oppressive Roman Empire. I mean, it, this is a lot going on right here. And so he's saying our commonwealth in some translations, our citizenship in some translations indeed is in heaven. And actually it's more accurate in the original text. They used to say more in the heavens. That, that was kind of the, this word is even plural in the original um, language. So in the heavens. And that was kind of the way they kind of viewed the way the world worked. Okay. And so, and we eagerly expect a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ from, from the heavens. It's not a physical place. I mean, we can't send a shuttle and they'll just end up in the heaven. You know, you know what I'm saying? There's a, there's, a, there's a way, a realm here that we're not totally, we can't touch it, so to speak, but the resources of the kingdom of the heavens are available to us right now. Yes. There are spiritual resources that we can draw upon right now that are not of this world. Things like true self-sacrificial love, joy, Patience, peace, kindness, faithfulness, goodness, self-control, those types of things, though they are available to you. You can draw upon those spiritual resources, all right? So we don't, we, our citizenship is not, and, and it's also not, well, it's in the heaven, so when we die, yeah, we can wait for it. And then that's not really what it's getting at either. We got to have a different idea of what it means to be a citizen of the heavens, of the kingdom of the heavens, all right? And, and here's the deal. History lesson. Rome, top left corner, right? Philippi, kind of middle of the screen top, all right? So Rome was the seat of the Roman Empire, all right? And Jordan talked about this in the very first lesson. Where, Philippi, how'd that get any connection to Rome? They're not even in the same landmass, right? Here's the deal. After Julius Caesar got assassinated, big civil war, generals started taking over, fight, fight, fight. The soldiers that fought in those battles for Rome, they were given land in Philippi. So Philippi was a Roman colony. It's like an outpost. So all of the benefits, all the privileges of being in the greatest empire of the time, Philippi got to experience that. Even though a lot of the na countries around them, they, did not, they didn't have that type of connection. But Philippi did. And the people living there, this is about 100 year, years after it started when Paul writes the letter. So you've got descendants of people that fought battles for Rome. 
Imagine the talks in the house about Rome, the idea of Rome, what it means to be Roman. And that's what Philippi take pride in being a Roman. And Philippi, we're not like other places. We are a colony of Rome. If we get attacked by some other country, do you know who's going to dispatch people? Caesar. Caesar, our Lord Caesar will dispatch people and save us because we are with Rome. And there was a huge sentiment of pride about being a Roman citizen. <laughs> All right? You could not get... <laughs> Philippi, was, it was dripping with pride, you know, because of all these soldiers that established it as a Roman colony. And even the word that Paul uses when he says citizenship, we translate it citizenship or commonwealth. But the original word is paleteoma. Does that word look familiar to you? We get a word in our English language, politics. Huh. Politeuma. What's that getting at? It's this concept of a political entity and, and your participation in it. All of that. Politeuma. Where is your allegiance? Where is the deepest allegiance that you have? Where do you take, are you proud to be Roman or American or whatever, right? Is that where you plant your flag of pride over and above maybe even your citizenship in the heavens? Could it be that sometimes we take more pride in our political con contexts than we do in our affiliation to King Jesus? Ooh, could that possibly happen? I think it could. It can happen in a lot of ways. It's Black History Month, right? And I, I have to search my own heart. I, like, I'm, I'm proud to be black. I mean, I'm, yes, I'm black, I know. <laughs> Some of you are thinking it, I already know, I already know. Both my parents are black, yes, I know. I know it's hard to believe. And. But there's a part of me that takes a, a pride in that, right? And it's like, Black History Month, what are we going to do at the church? You know, we need to. But there are times I think I can want to hold on to that so tightly that I can want to defend certain things and fight for certain things, and, you know? And I can see myself get twisted inside because it may not necessarily, I may not be really talking about my Christian faith the way I need to be because I'm holding so strongly on my palatiuma, my connection to my ethnicity. Some of y'all do the exact same thing. Yes. You know, I was on the phone call with a brother this week in our fellowship at church. Not going to tell you who, not going to tell you where, but they had a situation where, you know, they didn't, some people didn't like the way they were dealing with the racial issues and politics and stuff at their congregation. So some of the wealthier members decided not to give money to the church. All right. So now the church can't exist in the church. Paleteuma, where is your allegiance? Are you so offended? You get so offended, but what are you offended at? What part of you is getting offended? Your citizenship in heaven or this country? Seriously, think about it. Have you conflated the two? They were not, they were not the same to Paul. He's literally making a distinction. He's trying to say, I know people in Philippi. I know where you live. <laughs> I know how proud they are of their citizenship, but ours is not there. We don't cry to Rome to fix our problems. We're not waiting for Caesar as Lord to come and save us because they call Caesar Lord. That's what they called him. They called him the son of God. People, that's what they called him. This is a subversive letter. Don't get sucked into the polyteuma of your day. Don't let it happen in the church. That's what he's writing. You want to get something out of Philippians, get that. Because some of us don't get that, and we're at odds with each other, and we don't even want to come and join together and be brothers and sisters because we have enmeshed our polyteuma with our citizenship in heaven. And now we know different than anybody, everybody else out there that can't figure out how to get along. We can't figure out how to get along. What hope are we going to be? You got to figure out how to disagree with somebody Amen. in the Lord. And not divide. You got to figure it out. Because guess what? Paul had to write to the church because 
two ladies were struggling with each other. And so, brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way. In what way, Jeff? Listen to the the sermon that I've been talking about. You got to stay connected to Jesus. Have his mindset when you have issues with each other. And, And I appeal to Yodia and I appeal to Syntyche to agree with one another in the Lord. And in some translations, have the same mind. Wow. But again, why? Philippians 2, the mind of Jesus. So what were you, Yodia and Syntyche fighting about? We don't know. We don't know. But we know they were at odds. Then, but you got to imagine. So the letter is being read in a small situation. Philippian church, who knows how many people. Epaphroditus showed up. I got a letter from Paul. Oh, my gosh, thank you. Read it. And so you got to imagine Yodia sitting there. <laughs> they don't know what's in the letter. Syntyche sitting there. All this stuff about citizenship and all that. That's awesome. That's great. And then Paul's like, I appeal to you, Yodia. You know, she's like. <laughs> and you too, Centigius probably like, oh, I said, you too, Centigius. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they probably looked at each other like, you know, like, what is going on, you know? But then imagine if you heard, if you heard this letter being read and you're Yodia and Centigius. Yes. And I ask you too, my loyal companion, who we don't know who is, help these women. They fought alongside me in the gospel. Along with Clement and my other co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. If you're Yodia and you're Syntyche, what, what struggle between you two is worth dividing over? When you have fought for the message of Jesus together. What could separate you? If, what are you allowing to happen in your relationship? Your names are written in the book of life. Don't set your mind on whatever is going on here. Don't do it. North River, I say the same to you. Don't let it happen here. I'm out of time. I love you, Jesus. All right. Um, You know, hopefully we can be brothers and sisters, come together and live as Jesus lived, and hopefully we can imitate the Jesus we see in each other. Hopefully we can profess our deepest allegiance and loyalty to Jesus above any human paleteoma. We believe Jesus will rescue us, not Caesar, not this party, that party, nothing human. (laughs) We commit to reconciling with one another as our examples of unity, has the power to affect the reception of Jesus' message in the world. If we can't figure this stuff out in this church, why in the world we think we're going to help a bunch of people? we got to figure it out. And it's going to be uncomfortable, and it's going to get heated, and it's going to be Yodi and Sintiki moments. But we got to have the mind of Christ, and we got to get reconciled. we got to figure it out. All right? And uh, let's pray. I went a couple minutes over. Sorry, guys. All righty. I'm going to pray for the Lord's Supper. Oh, Lord, we are, oh, we get all jacked up sometimes, God. We need help. And this is the moment where we intentionally really take some, some moments to really reflect on the life of Jesus, the reason Jesus lived, how he lived, how he died his body hanging on the cross, and we're going to take the bread that represents that. He shed blood, he shed blood because of his an- anti paleteuma teachings. And we remember that he shed that blood, and we're going to drink this juice and remember that. And we're going to remember that he, 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 hang, he hung on that cross to remind us that earthly life is not everything because he walked out of that tomb. And we know that the end of our lives have the same promise that we will be walking anew in the kingdom of the heavens in its fullest form. And for that, we celebrate and we cannot wait. And we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, our true Lord and our true Savior. Amen.